Hello Grifters, welcome back to Griftlands. About a month ago, we had the we saw the introduction of the new character in Griftlands. I forget his name. Today we will try him out, and I, as I understand, we can't do his whole story yet, but I really am anxious to try and get in and see what he's all about. So we'll be starting it up. We got some perk points to spend. This game should need no introduction. If you don't know what Griff Lens is, you can check out my previous videos on it. I have done a ton, and if nothing else, then you can just enjoy the content as it is. It's like a card game similar to Ascension, but not uh, really. It's and evolving on the same formula. We have some perk points to spend before we go in from the previous run. We can get tier 4 perks. Let's read them out loud. Uh, animal handling allows us to get an additional pet. Nice. Fast learner lowers the max XP of all non-basic cards by 2, making it easier to level cards. That's really nice. At the start of each day, a random person that hates you will dislike you instead. Interesting. So you, yeah, you forgive people, or they forgive you. Socializer. Gain one maximum resolve whenever a new person loves you. Huh. Interestingly, none of these are like... That interesting. Um, unencumbered gain an additional graph slot of each type. Yeah, extra maximum resolve eight. Oh, we had another one down here. Survivalist. After each battle, heal four health. Now that's... Different. Very interesting. That's something we definitely should unlock. Items having one additional use. 12 extra maximum health. At the start of the game, three random people will like you. Not a big fan of that one either. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. Unlock four tier th three tier four perks to enable this tier. So we definitely want to buy up here. Fast learner does seem pretty cool. Forgiveness can be good, but honestly, people hating you often ends up with you being able to kill them, thus gaining more experience and more loot and stuff, and so it's not that bad having people hate you. It is... it, it, it can suck, but... Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. At the start of each day, and that means like four to five times during a run at max, so... Let's unlock an extra pet instead, that's all the points. Now we will go in and say, play Grifflands. We will want Smith, the Wastrel, a Nerd well with a heart of gold and three livers of cast iron. What? Okay. Haha, <laughs> interesting. The inheritance is the long form story mode. Then we have the inheritance story difficulty. Oh, so this is the easy mode for if you just want to learn out the story. Of course, we will be redoing all the dialogue as I used to do in the other series. I'll be attempting it anyway. Let's have a look at what kind of deck Smith starts with. So for negotiations, he has a Bewilder, which gives us three composure, can be transformed into all kinds of stuff, okay. Bully, gives in, uh, giving in a little attack, and Bravado. Bravado, this card deals bonus damage equal to the number of hostility cards played in a row this turn. Interesting. Hmm. Is that, that, is that one extra for the first time? Probably not. So for the second Bravado card you play, you get one bonus damage, and so on and so forth. That is my presumption. Alright, alright, alright. That's interesting. We've got Bragg. <laughs> he likes to brag, apparently. And he's Renowned too. This is another attack card. Slightly better than the Hostility one over here. In, uh, Renowned 2. Increase the maximum damage of this card by 2. Come again after you've played it. So the the damage of the Bragg will go up every time you play it. And we have multiple instances of Bragg. Interesting. Now, when destroyed, when destroyed, deal one damage to your core. No, no, hold on. Oh, no, I see what I'm, I'm misunderstanding. Renown. This card has an additional effect if you have enough Renown. So, if you have a Renown of 2 or more, and you increase the maximum damage of this card by 2. Renown. When this when destroyed, deal 1 damage to your core argument per stack of Renown. At the end of your turn, this deals 1 damage for every 2 stacks of a to a random argument. At the start of your turn, Renown is reduced by 1. So it is like a, it's an argument that gets spawned in the game. 
in the in negotiation, which has a resolve of three that says there at the bottom, and you build it up somehow. Yeah, here, name drop. You gain renown. This one does not give you renown. It requires a certain amount of renown. This one gives us renown. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we draw a card. Gain two renown. And at the end of your turn, deals one damage for every two stacks of, to a random argument. At the start of your turn, renown is reduced by one. Mm -hmm. And if when it is destroyed, deal one damage to your ar core, core argument per stack of renown. Interesting. So it, it can backfire. But basically, you build it up and then it gets good. I see, I see a renown deck being really cool. That sounds really fun. All right, all right. In battle, then, Smith's Flask. Drink. All right, he's he likes to drink. Improvise a card from a pool of special cards. And that'll be this this down here. But usually when I see a, a set like this, it just means that this card can do all sorts of things. And then you don't have to really know every card by heart because you will probably not get the, the one card that you're looking for anyway, right? Unless you improvise plus, but usually I go for the upgraded one anyway. All right, bash, bash, just hitting hard. Toughen up, apply three defense. Easy to understand. Does it level into something special? For you? Uh, oh, we've got some new tags in here. Alleviate, adrenaline, but we can't read them through this screen here, so we will have to learn about them later. That's not true. Apparently, I can click here. Adrenaline. Attack damage is increased by one. At the start of your turn, remove all adrenaline. This is probably attack damage is increased by one per stack of adrenaline, I'm assuming. All right. We will learn all these tags in time. Smith's Arsenal. Insert hammer throw or bottle smash into your hand. Hammer throw is, is a attack applying one trauma. Uh, here, trauma. Whenever owner is attacked, increase trauma by one. At ten stacks, owner gains traumatized and loses trauma. Traumatized is the next attack against the owner deals double damage and reduces this by one. Uh -huh -huh. All right, that's an interesting. So you you apply a debuff that ticks up whenever that owner is attacked. So you need to attack them ten times. Then they get traumatized, and then the next, so the 11th attack after applying the hammer throw will deal double damage. Kind of a weird mechanic, not super strong, but I mean, it's nice, I suppose. Still a good attack. Bottle smash then. Expend one empty bottle card from your deck to play this. P apply one wound. Okay, so this applies one wound, empty bottle. Hold on, how do we get an empty bottle? Do we have an empty bottle somewhere? Huh. Do we get one when we drink? No. Here, expend one empty bottle. Drink. One would assume, yeah, drink, add an... Aha! Every time we have keyword drink, we add an empty bottle card to your discard pile. I see. I see, I see. And an empty bottle is just a zero draw card expend. All right. That can be used for other things. And a dropkick. <laughs> Look at that. All right, take three. Oh, you take three damage when you play this one, which can be reduced by defenses and stuff, but then it's a high damage attack. Ooh. All right, I like Smith. I like Smith. We are going to go in with some perks. Let's see. He has low resolve, I noticed. So I think just as a base, it seems like it. I, I don't know anything about his run at all. So uh, we have to... Uh, just make a, a basic, a good basic deck here, I would build, so that I can get through the, this part of the story that is so far unlocked. Fatigue starts two turns later than normal, that's quite nice. We took the, the fast learner up here, which I think is going to be our only XP perk. And then we could go for more maximum health to get us through the day. He seems like a tough guy already though. Double pet, it's tricky because sometimes you can't even get one pet. Then survivalist for some passive healing. All right, sure. And custom game, we will not, I think, be using mutators on the first attempt with Smith. So that'll be for the next run. No prestiging yet. No outfits. You were. There's no voice acting. No, you were born to disappoint. 
When your wealthy parents tried to foot you with the bill of their ambitions, you left the check with your siblings and hit the road. So this is Smith's family, and there he is. Okay, look at that. He doesn't really fit in, does he? This is Papa Smith, Mama Smith, and a brother, a sister, and a younger brother, as I'm assuming. Alright, look at him. Actions speak louder than words, so while you gambled and drank your way through it every dive by the side of the sea, your parents cleaned up after you, eager to keep the family name out of ledges. And here they are, mommy and, and daddy paying off uh, the bartender to <laughs> keep it quiet. Meanwhile, your siblings flourished. Thurox, the baby, grew out of diapers and to the merchant skills, keeping his skin oiled. Mulifi, your twin sister, sharpened her teeth at the Admiralty, swimming up the ranks like a sharp-toothed eel. And Wixmeli, the eldest, came became a Hessian cardinal. Guess who's guess those family tides paid off. Alright, so that's him over there. We have the twin sister at the, in the Admiralty and the merchant younger brother there. Look at them all being successful. So at least when your parents finally died, they had three other broodlings to be proud of. <laughs> but when you came home to claim your inheritance, it turns out that your parents weren't the only ones to feel sensible. Oh, I see a plot thickening. Aha! It's all about that inheritance then. You're thrown from your house like yesterday's curtains, left to mold in a heap. They roughed you up good enough to leave you seeing stars, so you take a rare moment to think things through. This ain't the first time you've woken up in a ditch, but it might be the first time it actually hurt. Alright, go with what happened, draft a negotiation card, or check yourself for bruises. Draft a combat card. Hmm. Let's see, we have four of each graft slot, which is always important to note. No one hates or loves us at the moment. I will go for a negosh. Let's go for a combo card. Sure. A fella like you hasn't combed every bar in Havaria without knowing how to throw a punch, but your sister knocked you down the moment you spoke disrespect. Okay. My sister. Hammer swing, applying two trauma, okay, can, which means we can then build it quicker. And we've got a new keyword here, chain. Transform this card and add it to your draw pile. If this goes to your discard pile, this card reverts to its basic form. Transform this card and add it to your draw pile. Transform it into what? Interesting. All right, that seems, and it's an upgraded card. That it definitely does not have uh, XP on it. So what is this? It's not a leveled card either, because it doesn't have like the leveled up border. Very interesting, because it because it chains, it cannot be leveled up. Maybe. Hmm. Two for two damage and two trauma. Interesting. This seems like a bad card at glance, but this chain is probably where the, the the money's at. Power through. For the rest of your turn, any damage you receive is reduced to one. The rest of your turn, any damage you receive is reduced to one. That's really nice. That's all it does, and then it expends. That's a very strong card. Ripcracker. If your target has trauma, apply one wound. Okay. Well, my gut says we should take part of the power through, but I I need to know what this hammer swing is all about. It seems like such a bad card, but I'm curious about this chain. So, your bruises will heal, but you'll need to keep your arms spring loaded if you don't want to be caught off guard again. You dust off yourself through your clothes are already, though your clothes are already worn from the road. Usually, there's no one around but the seasoned statues to gawk at your disgrace. But the streets don't look the same as you remember, which with patched elbowed grifters loitering nearby, no way could they no way they could all be here for your parents' funeral, right? Even though when your brother Wix was anointed into the cult, they couldn't play this many peasants to look happy about it. Before you entered 
by the front entrance, elbowing your way through the crowd. This time, though, you head around the back. But an out-of-place Admiralty guard blocks your way. It's a cool, sir. It's a cool, sir. Hold it right there, Grifter. This captain, the captain has to give him a license to beat you down again if you need it. Right. If you know who I am, you know it. I ain't no Grifter. This is my house. My house. Not anymore, it ain't. Besides, I've been stationed here for five years, and this is the first time I've seen you. Oh, this is Fistlook. I've been, we've seen him before in the other stories. I had better things to do than let my glands harden around this dump, didn't I? Now let me through. Absolutely not. You work for Mulifi, right? My sister gave me an invite weeks ago. She wanted me here. So let me back in. She also gave you a knockdown. Unfortunately, plans have changed. You are not welcome here. By any of your siblings. Kradeshi politics are never kind. But to be disowned by your own brood? That must sting. It'd take time and self-reflection to notice where your feelings are at. And you'd rather avoid it altogether. You notice a box just inside the estate gates. A glint of precious metals catching your eye. Looks like some of the heirlooms from your parents' vacation home. The man, one of the heirlooms, obviously. You expect me to walk away empty-handed? My parents are dead, and I've got Bruce rights. Rights to that box, for instance. Fislok glances over his shoulder in surprise. Seems the book box was overlooked. No one here cares about your damn rights. I'm doing you a favor turning you away like this. We can either threaten them, or beat him up. Well, I say beat him up. Didn't expect you to have. Didn't expect to have to cave someone's face in on this side of the gates. But at least I'm used to it. All right. Back in the good old Grifflands. Okay, Smith battle tutorial. You're about to fight a Smith for the first time. Would you like to check, see a quick tutorial about your unique mechanics? Sure. Smith's Moxie. Whenever Smiths take damage on his turn, his Moxie increases by a random amount between 1 and 2. At the end of his turn, Smith will heal equal to the amount of Moxie he has. After healing, his Moxie is halved down to a minimum of 1. This is whenever he takes damage, which means he can take he can get more than more than 1 and 2 Moxie per turn. Very interesting. Oh, and you can self damage and get Moxie. Very interesting. Smith's drinking. Smith can drink various things during combat that have different effects, but also add empty bottles to his discard. Empty bottles can be played to draw new cards or used by other cards for powerful effects. Alright, as we had already guessed. So Moxie is currently at 1. 1 Moxie available. At the end of his turn, Smith will heal equal to the amount of moxie he has. After healing, his moxie is halved down to a minimum of one. Okay. So I didn't really need this uh, survivalist thing, obviously, because we already heal during combat. Very interesting. He's doing six damage. We can defend against it. We can drink. We can apply. Hmm. Well, I'm really curious about this hammer swing. So... Ah. Alright, that makes it into a Hammer Swing 2. Apply to Trauma and Chain. Huh. Again, that seems really bad. Okay, maybe I made a big mistake. We will defend with this one. Alright. So we took damage. Moxie didn't go up because that happens at the end of the turn, which was before he attacked. So it went up to 1 again, I think. So Hammer Swing 2. He's got, what, 2 Trauma? So all it does is build Trauma, which is not that good. Here we will go for... Oh, this one's cheaper. Oh, does it get cheaper and cheaper? It gets better and better anyway. Aha! 
Very interesting. All right, and now we can drop kick, taking no damage, but still healing the one. Yes. And he used formation. All right, he's doing three damage. We can defend against it. Here's the next hammer swing. So if this ever hits the discard pile, we lose it. All right, it resets to the two for two cause, uh, two cause for two damage, right? So you gotta keep using it then. Which I'm not opposed to that. Let's try it. It doesn't get XP though. Yeah, attack twice with eight. Okay, now we're talking. I am no longer regretting my decision. That's amazing. Hmm. Let's drink and get a bottle. And we can drink again. Draw two cards. Stack. Expend up to two empty bottle cards from your deck. Deal three damage for each bottle or just gain one power. But we can't use it this turn because we don't have enough actions. That's still fine. This is a Murder Bay Blaster. <laughs> Pangalactic Blaster. Oh, and here's a little indicator of how many bottles we have in the deck in total. I think they can pull from anywhere, so in between discard hand and draw, we have one bottle. Where's my... Oh, it's... Oh, too bad. Okay. He exposed me, but now he's not attacking, so that's not a big deal. We cannot defend as much. Uh, we will... Toughen up. And drop kick. That should give me yeah, to two Moxie, and I have taken two damage total, which means that we are about. What? The Rastel Smith can alleviate this much recoverable health. This is increased by the amount of damage taken on your turn. Hmm. Okay. We still have an, uh, an extra action. So we are at full health, we have the hammer swing to finish the fight, but honestly we need XP on the other cards. So toughen up, toughen up, and drink. Gain 2 adrenaline. Adrenaline attack damage is increased by 1, at the end of your turn remove all adrenaline, and another murder blade bastard. Let us take the stack and not use it. We cannot gain more XP this turn. I know the hammer swing will reset, it's fine. This is how you play Grifflands. Now we cannot gain more XP anyway, so now we just attack. <laughs> that drop cake though. And we don't have to kill him. In fact, we shouldn't. Let's leave him alive. Well. How dare you stand between me and my inheritance? Alright. Let me turn down the music ever so slightly. Main volume. Like so. Alright, we got money, we get the Admiralty Intel, sure. Pick a battle card. Someone, no one hated me for that. Perfect. So we, we got reward without any penalty. Shrewd. Gain defense equal to your recoverable health. Huh. Nap. Apply three defense. Draw two cards next turn. Mm, very nice. Headbutt. Take four damage, but apply two impair. And impair lowers their damage dealt by three, 33% for two turns. That seems like a really good card. Semi-defensively, uh, semi-defensive, but at the same time aggressive. Starting to get a reputation for violence, so we are dangerous. Which is for negotiations. This isn't the first time you took a f fight too far, but you don't want this to be the last either. When you hear shouts from further into the estate, you have way you have to assume reinforcements are on their way. You open the box. And this is the sort of the starting package. You either get a upgraded battle card, book of Kradeshi poems, draft two negotiation cards, or slapdash surgery at a battlecraft slot. Hmm. 
Do I have two negotiation cards? I'm hoping to build a full-on Renown deck. That sounds really cool. Upgrade a battle card doesn't seem like it's super pertinent at the start here. Let's draft some negotiation cards. Renown 4. This card deals 3 bonus damage. Influence. Ah, oh, look at that. <laughs> Self-goal. Alright, standing. Why, just standing? Apply 2 Composure. Renown 5. Apply 3 bonus Composure. Oh, nice. At hominem, gain one character attack. Expend. What is that? Character attack. At the end of your turn, spend one renown and apply three composure to your core argument. Character attack is an argument with four resolve. Huh. Let me see if I understand that. So it's it, it spends your renown to apply composure to your core argument every turn. And Renown already ticks down by one at the, end of, at the end of the turn. So now we are losing two Renown per turn if we take this one. And we don't have enough ways to build Renown yet. So I think that's that would be a bad choice. Influencer. <laughs> I mean, I, I gotta take that one, don't, don't I? <laughs> Go between. Remove a friendly argument. Gain Renown equal to its maximum resolve. That's nice. All out. Gain two defenselessness. Reduce the cost of two random cards in your hand by one until the end of your turn. So it, it gains you action to defenselessness though. You cannot apply composure while this is active. At the start of your turn, reduce one defenselessness uh, by one. So for not only for this turn, but for the next turn again, we would not be able to gain composure. That seems pretty crazy. Create one bruiser. Target opponent's argument each turn for 1-1 damage. At the start of your turn, gain 2 composure. Oh. That's really good. Any downsides? No? I mean, that's just a really good one. This one builds Renown, though. Which is more than one. Except, there's a downside here. We don't really have friendly arguments to remove. Goon has 4 Resolve. Exactly the amount, the the type of card you would want to activate go between later. Uh, do we have any ways to spawn arguments of our own? We have the we have a renown argument that we could be could remove to then get three renown because that's the maximum resolve of this card. So you remove a friendly renown argument to get more renown. It would it would work except when you remove the, the the first argument, the first renown argument, you would take damage. So no, we're getting goon. That's a really good card, regardless of everything else. It's always good to have those cards that are not combo cards. That just good basic cards. At, at least at the very early in the game, just getting good basic cards so that you can't like draw a bad hand and not be able to do anything, because that could be a killer, especially early on. Alright, you grab blindly at whatever fits into your hand and quickly weave your way out through the crowd. A stealthy escape isn't your usual style. Unfortunately, with the streets so full of grifters, you manage... Fortunately, not unfortunately, you manage to slip away un 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 unnoticed. <laughs> Maybe I need some more coffee. Mm. And we have a whole new map to move around in. Do we get the name of this area? Negative. All right, we are here, and we are going over here to Maurice's Palace. Sweet relief. Life's got you down. Time to hit the bar. Sounds like a plan. I hope that uh, the Kradeshi, the race that I am, is immune to the coronavirus. I'm sure we are. The hideaway isn't your first choice, but it's the only one that doesn't have a bouncer at the door keeping pilgrims away. Inside the air is humid and heavy, the way most Kradeshi like it. You take a deep breath to coat your lungs, and for the first time you actually feel at home. It takes a moment for you to notice the Jarakal barkeep, hair slick with the heat. Hey barkeep, whatever you got on that's on the house. <laughs> I'm in mourning. On the house? 
You got another thing coming if you think. Smith? Got it in one, uh, do I... The nervous twitching of the Dragle's nose brings back fun memories of your school days. He was in the picture where mommy were, and daddy was pay paying uh, off the barkeep, so that's the same barkeep. Smeet Morif, you old fluff, how you been, buddy? Boy, it's good to see a friendly face. I've had a hell of a week. Yeah, well, you and me both, I guess. Is there something you want, or are you just here to ask for free swill? Because you're extra sensitive, you notice that Sweet Maurice is looking a little limp. Hmm. Ask about Pearl on the phone, the pilgrims, and the business. Anything you can do to entice folks back in? Bars in the south know to stay how to stay competitive. Yeah, well, with the great gates guarded a lot harder. But with the gates guarded, it's a lot harder to get a uh, grey matter. Lushelko. Stuff that falls outside the court's lift of acceptable vices. If I could get some of that, it might be put me back on the map. That can't be too hard. There's got to be enough people are paying bribes to keep the jakes in rotation. Oh, definitely. But uh, there's a lot more Luminaria wandering around than usual. Admiralty, I know how to handle, but Luminari? They never look the other way. Ah, I'm not afraid of no Hessian. My family's been in the cult since I was a tadpole. Well, mine were late converts, and I got the bald patches to show for it. Oh, jeez. Pearl on the phone. What's with all these pilgrims, anywho? Not like the neighborhood to tolerate so much riffraff. It's the great beaching, of course. What? The great beaching. A mysterious behemoth heaved itself from the sea onto the shores of Pearl on Foam. Pearl on Foam must be, like, the town? I think? Believed to be a message from Hesh, the beaching was a, it has triggered an influx of pilgrims and opportunists in, into what was once a controlled and opulent area of Havaria. Interesting. The what what name? You don't know? What are you back in town for then? My parents' funeral. Must be... you must have heard. But that... that's the same thing? <laughs> they... no way. They, they squashed my parents with a, a luminous behemoth. Beached itself onto the shore about a week past. Just sent out tentacles and anchored into the mud and heaved itself onto land. Everyone sure is some sign from Hesh. Huh. Wild. What's that got to do with my parents? Well, jeez, I hate to be the one to tell you this. They were mud bathing on the shore when it... when it happened. Oh, so... Oh. Afraid so. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. <laughs> with all these pilgrims, you'd think business would be hopping. You'd think. But the ones who mean it are only drinking salt water. Normally, I cater to, you know, nobles and such. But none of them want to be seen at a bar with no security. Not when the huddled masses are about. Ha! Huh? I ain't never been afraid of slumming. And look where it got me. Word on the street is that you've been disowned. That's got nothing to do with it. Whatever you say, Smith. Yeah, well, whatever you're doing, count me in. We're friends, after all. We are? Old buzz, like you and me, we gotta stick together. We do? What can I do to help, huh? You say the word, and your old pal Smith will knock some heads for you. Assuming this ain't some trick, I got a lead on something that might help. I just didn't have the muscle to see it done. Hey, I got enough to spare. Leave it to me. Sure, Smith. Whatever you say. Alright, let's get cracking. The fastest Oshnu. We got two quests to choose from here, so... Battle and negotiation. Sweet Marie made a sizable bet on the next race at the Oshnu race. You need to make it a winner. And we would get this Spark Shot, which isn't a super good card. 
Then three is a party negotiation with a restore health or resolve reward, huh? Sweet Marie needs you to drum up some business at, for his bar. Well, I guess here we get a card at least, so I say we take this one spark shot. I put it down, but it's actually a decent card, for sure. So, fast as new it is. The snail race. Not sure they have a, uh, not sure they have them wherever you've been, but have you been following the races? The Oshnush? Nah. And yeah, a domesticated giant snail used for food, transport, and entertainment. Everything moves too quick. No drama. Normally, I don't mess with gambling. Too risk adverse. But these are strange times, and well, I just happen to have a lead on the next race. Everyone expects Booty to win. Booty is a wild racing Oshno, okay. But he's apparently had an injury. One race away from the Noodle House, they say. So those in the know are actually putting shields on warts. Another wild racing Oshno, okay. I was hoping for some more detail, but that's fine. Those in the know? Huh. And who told you? Nobody. I heard, uh, overheard a patron talking about it with a friend. Oh yeah? They were sitting, what, here at the bar? Right in front of me. They were keeping quiet, but some folks think the bartender is a part of the scenery. Uh-huh. I've run that scam before too. Scam? Sure. Puts more shields in circulation and body wins them all. Take my advice and just forget it. I would, but... You already made your wager. How much? More than I can afford to lose. Uh-oh. Yeah, so we gotta go and kick the other Oshnut's butt and then it can't race, something like that? Let me think. Been a while since I thought about Oshnut, other than, you know, for Eden. I'm washed. How could I be so stupid? There's no getting my money back. Sure there is, but bud. And then some. You just need to make sure your snail wins. When's the race? In a couple hours. Alright, no problem. Plenty of time to turn the tides in your favor. Sit pretty, I'll be back. Alright. Some patrons. We can buy a card. Anything pertinent? Nah. Go to your room. We'll get there later. Alright. We'll go for an hour long intro episode, I think. The fastest Oshnu and the fastest Oshnu. Okay, we've got two locations to go to. It might be easy to just convince Pichu to throw the race, or Nisha might be able to give you something to affect one of the snails in the race. That seems like something Smith would do. Alright, we run into Rock. A civilian bartender. You're used to seeing strange characters on the road, but the fellow who steps up to you short would what? But the fellow who steps up to you short would look out of the place just about anywhere. Hmm. Can I shop in? Why? What's this? You're no pilgrim, that's for sure. But you also don't like. But you also don't quite look like a pearly. Best of both worlds is what I am. Born and bred from the foam, but seasoned by the road. Then perhaps your palais is equally adventurous, hmm? Fancy bringing one of my amuse booches? Fancy trying one of my amuse booches? Rare ingredients sourced from the bark and local de delicacies fused into one unique cuisine. We can try the Deep Eel Eclair, Truffled Scotless, or Tight Pool Pots. <laughs> tight Pots, okay. Gotta do that one. You sure these are food? The colors look unnatural. Nothing is food unless it's eaten. I guess that's true. Chuck, chuck, chuck. You bite down on the thin membrane of the pod, which promptly explodes for the pressure. Ah! The inside of your mouth erupts into itchy sores. Oh my, I'm terribly sorry. I guess that one wasn't ripe yet. Please, take the rest as an apology. They might not ripen, but at the very least you can use them on your enemies. 
Uh, thanks for the grub, but maybe uh, stick to the normal stuff, huh? Normal stuff? That's a bit loaded. There's no discovery without risk. However, it's hard to find willing taste testers as it is. I prefer nobody knew about your uh, bad taste. We can scold him. You'll feel better for scolding Rock, but he likely isn't. But he isn't likely to appreciate it. Or promise not to tell anyone. You feel the extent of that dubious meal. Ah. Then he will like me. Sure. Who would I tell? It's just food. You think my life is really so boring that this is what I choose to relive? Yeah, I thought my food would be an inspiration. Well, don't get mad, dude. But if we are agreed, that's enough for me. Rock cleans up his gear and leaves you to rinse the taste from your mouth. Lost 8 HP, oh well, whatever. Gain battle card, tight, po tight pool parts, hits all enemies. Destroy after 5 uses. Alright, that's a good card. Yeah. For 8 HP, nothing. Here we have a character to talk to. Bile brokers aren't exactly welcome in the Pearl, but the old and young alike often seek out their own their concoctions. Yeah, Lisha. Lisha is also a recurring character for sure. Bile brokers chemist. Hey, you're not allowed in here. The face isn't familiar, but the tone is. Who oh, me? Nisha points to a rough sketch behind the counter. It looks that looks more or less like you, only fifteen years younger. Banned for life, I believe it says. Sound familiar? Uh no. I've uh never been here before. I'm just a pilgrim, right? First time in the pearl. Oh wow, it's so nice so nice here. Uh real fancy. <laughs> Never in all my dreams did I imagine me, Joe McNobody, would end up in a pearl on the film. Foam. Right, that's the kind of mistake and nobody like me would make for sure. Business is slow, so you can browse. But keep your hands where I can see them and don't touch anything. These aren't beauty supplies. She dislikes me, alright. Well, ask Leisha about Oshnu's physiology. Hey, what do you know about uh, mucous membranes? I know that if you want yours clogged, you're going to have to find someone else. I don't sell uppers to riffraff. Not mine, you loon. And Oshnus. Oh, well, uh... I don't typically offer veterinary, veterinary service. Chemically speaking, Oshnus are very com complicated. Yeah, must be hard to make him go fast. Or slow him down. Well, yes. That's why there's a whole industry built up around it. I do sell a few substances that, well, can substitute for certain pheromones. How much? Ah, I see. Oh. I suspect you won't be just be paying for my expertise, but my discretion as well. Aha. Uh -huh. Pay money, give Leisha a tissue sample, 20 HP, okay, or convince her to waive the, her fee. Uh, she dislikes me, so she gets extra result, but of course we're gonna try a little negotiation. Huh. Seems to me there's money to be made and maybe studying Oshnus a little bit more closely. Especially swanky pedigree Oshnus like they got here in the film. Alright. And we also get a basic ability in the negotiations, which is confrontational for Smith. Whenever any argument is created, deal one damage to a random target. Any argument. Hopefully also if they create an argument. That sounds cool. We are up against Purple Haze. Whenever you play a card, draw a card, and then discard a random card in your hand. Okay. We being attacked by four negotiation damage. We can defend all of it. Bravado deals more if we get... more hostility cards played in, in, in succession. But I play one card, then we draw a card and discard a card. So now we can brag more. This one only gets good when we have more renown. Let me defend more. 
Always a good idea. Why did this one get boosted now? Oh, because we do dangerous. Uh huh. While this is in your hand, hostility cards deal extra damage and diplomacy cards deal less damage. I would like to destroy that one, but we can't right now, and it's actually helping us, so it's fine. Alright. First round, we dealt damage, we took no damage. Bit slow, but hopefully it gets better. And indeed, she created an argument that makes me, that makes me deal damage to her. As eccentricity, all cards have a random cost between 0 and 2. Oh, that's really good for us, especially with her purple haze. Interesting. We can gain Renown, Door Card, or Goon create Bruiser. When I play one of them, there's a chance to discard the other. And I do feel like the Goon is slightly more important to get played. Ah, oh, and then they, we did discard the... Zero cost, that's unfortunate. Okay. Mm -hmm -hmm. Yeah, that might have been a bad play because we needed that renown. Dang it. Uh, bravado is increased right now because of. Bravado? Wait, that's. Bully is the name of the card. Bravado is the name of the tag. I don't think I want to destroy eccentricity. There's another bully. Alright, we can only play one thing. Now we can play... But might as well name drop. Gain two renown and draw a card. Sounds good. And another one. And a brag. Alright, and that stopped us. Let's see, we have the renown at, what, two stacks? No, stacks at four. It's got three resolve... Why, what's the 2 for? <laughs> That's how much damage it does, because it's it deals damage equal to half the stacks, right? So, 4 stacks, 2 damage being dealt over here. Nigun, the bruiser here, meanwhile dealing 1 into the center. We're taking 4, but next turn we will start gaining composure from the bruiser, alright. Yes. That is A-OK. -okay. So, oh, it gains... Ah, it gains composure onto itself, the bruiser here. I see, not not to the core argument. Interesting. Well, we want to defend. I really want to play the brag, but we should play the name drop as well. Hoping to get both. Drawing more cards is really nice when every card we draw has a chance to be zero cost. And it just keeps going. Yep. She, uh, <laughs> she destroyed herself with her own little setup. I mean, luck could go her way or luck could go against her and it, it chose to go against her today. Alright, they're about to destroy my resolve, and then what happens? When destroyed, deal one damage to your core argument per stack of renown, and that's six right now. Oh, and see here we draw two all the way. That's bad. We could destroy dangerous. And then hope to draw another card that we can play, or we could just play Bewilder, and then we could keep renown alive. And I think that's way more important. Good. She's down to two. We are still gaining XP, so I would rather not finish it, but we've already won. Look at these damages being dealt. So we just need to play stuff that gains XP. Yeah, again. And then I guess we would want to level Influencer. What is this over here? When destroyed, draw to your maximum hand size. Oh, can we destroy that one without killing her? Yes, there's a chance. Oh, we didn't. Alright, but we still win here. Pick a negotiation card. 
Scapegoat. Force all enemy intent and arguments to target one of your arguments. Very cool. Another influencer. Even footing. Apply two composure to a random friendly argument. Repeat once per enemy non-core argument. Oh, that could be really strong. It goes up to three or repeat once per enemy non-core argument plus two. Huh. Playing defensive is often really good in negotiations, although not really, because they do tend to ramp up quite quickly, so you also need to be pretty aggressive. Influencer does a ton of damage, by the way. It does require us to have pretty high renown, and right now we only we are not adding new ways to get renown to our deck. Uh, we might even want to decline for that specific reason. But I, I believe in the full influencer deck, I think. Well, hmm. even footing also seems really good here. Force all enemy intents and arguments to target one of your specific arguments. That one can become free. That's really nice. Uh, or it can it deals damage here. Strength. What? How does this attack? Interesting. Biting scapegoat. I, I do not understand how it has damage on it, because you need to target a one of your arguments, surely. Interesting. But Pale Scapegoat for zero is really nice. Tough choice. We did not get any other defensive cards yet. I thought Goon was one, but not really. So I think we are getting the Eving Footing to add a defensive card to the deck. If only you had an agent who could get close to the thoroughbreds, then you could just sit back and observe. None of the risk, all of the reward. You're proposing I conduct doping experience on, uh, experiments on the Pearls, Prize, Oshnush? No, I'm proposing you just keep an eye out and, you know, pay attention. Whatever you learn could probably be pretty valuable. I suppose that's true. And if my dosage kills the snail, that's a lesson learned as well. Very well. <coughs> Sorry about that. All I need is some simple Oshnu drugs. Something to make him kick their heels or drag them. Either works. Whichever is easier. Neither of them are what I'd consider easy. Oshnus aren't of this world. So, neither are we, I mean, strictly speaking. And Oshnus are more alien still. All the same, it's all pheromones, one way or another. I can make a perfume, but it'll be costly whichever way you decide. Alright. Either speeding one up, or slowing one down, or reconsider. I know a snail that could use a rest. How do we slow it down? Ah, well, that to that end, we simply target the beast's spatio-temporal perception. Lacing a sedative with a recent discovery from the Rolak, endothelial penetrating spores, nothing too alarming, will tether to that area of the creature's brain to its cranial sheath. Its sense of time will be pretty much literally suspended. You said simply. Well, in comparison to what? Metaphysical nanotechnology? Now you're just making things up. All right. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta just ask about speeding up because that's gonna be even worse. You know what? I'm impatient. Let me. Let's make the Oshnu fast. Hmm. Yes. Well, a mating pheromone would certainly provide the motivation. But you'll need something physiological for the trust. Oh, for the thrust. <laughs> uh, just a little uh, bit of spark delivered to the amygdala will trigger a metabolic cascade. I'll have to add a time lapse in uh, time. Sorry, time release inhibitor, or its hearts will all explode. Of course. Is this safe for the Oshnu? Yes. For you. <laughs> We're going to go for the slow plan, by the way. 
Agree to this plan. All I need to know is that it works alarmingly well. Give me a moment. Nisha lines up a, a row of bubbling beakers before you can bark. You let your eyes glaze over just long enough to get past all the science stuff. Here, it's done. Hey, that looks kind of tasty, actually. Do not eat it. Unless you want to regurgitate your digestive lining out both ends at once. Jeez, that's a hard pass. Yes, it is. Okay. <laughs> oh, lovely. Done. Open map. Alright. And I think, I mean, what a nice ending to the first episode. I love the writing in this game, as always. And, yeah. So, in the next episode, we will go to the amazing Arshnu race. I'm excited. I hope you guys are excited. See you in the next episode, folks. And bye-bye.